Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Michael McCarvel and this is Advanced Junction Series Part 4. So in this part we're going to talk about the section crew boxcar that was sitting in Vance Junction and it's right next to the section house. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the Vanta Model Works kit BMW 135 and this is, if you're following through the instructions of that kit, this is actually the second one listed. We've already completed the section car shed. So again, I want to thank the friends of the Cumberson Toltec Scenic Railroad for allowing me, allowing me to use the historical photos that we've been able to use in this series. Without that, uh, it would take away a lot of the historical background uh, for this. Um, also, there is, in the body of this video, there's going to be links for the YouTube channel and the Facebook group that uh, this material is going to be posted on as well. So check those out. Feel free to join and subscribe. So as I said, the Bantam Model Works Kit 135, you can see the parts. There is uh, four sheets of laser cut material. We're going to use this material and assemble the kit. It is not going to look this pristine and <laughs> organized for very long because uh, the structures that were out along the tracks here at Vance Junction got a lot of heavy weathering and um, they weren't really cared for like a pristine coach was. Even the coach that's here isn't <laughs> taken care of like a coach should be. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to assemble this using the instructions. Uh, there is not a lot as in um, probably about a page worth of instructions for this kit. So this is going to go pretty quick. It's a simple uh, boxcar kit. So it's going to be assemble the boxcar structure pieces, that sheet on the right. And then we're, after that's assembled, we're going to skin those um, that main boxcar piece. We're going to skin it with the rest of the pieces that you see here. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble the main body of this boxcar. And I'll glue it together. I'm going to be using uh, Tight Bond 3 uh, wood glue. Uh, that stuff works really, really well. We don't need to do anything to the wood, prep it or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and glue those pieces together. We'll start talking about standing and weathering and all that business once we start getting a little bit closer to attaching some of the uh, external pieces that are going to be a little more visible. So let me go ahead and get that started and we'll jump right back. Okay, if you get everything put together, um, you'll end up with something like this. And you'll notice there's a rib down the center. Yeah, so if you're looking for that, <laughs> um, it's essentially this shape of a piece. It's in the RPO bag. It's not actually in the boxcar bag. So it took me a little while to figure that out. So since each of the bags um, are a unique structure, one of the four in this kit, um, you know, I didn't open any of the other bags, so it took me forever to hunt down this thing. I was even thinking about just putting a piece of wood in there, and I said, oh, you know what, I'm going to look through the other bags too. So sure enough, I found it. So it's in the RPO bag. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that one on, and then at that point, um, we're going to start skinning this. So you can see the sheet there that's got the side panels and the ends. Start with the ends, put on the sides, and then we'll start working on trim. So when we come back, this will be glued in and oh by the way I also reinforced all the corners with a nice healthy uh, fillet of uh, glue just to give this thing a lot of strength. Um, even though it's just going to sit on a layout as a static building I always like to make sure these things are nice and strong. Um, I don't want to go back ever and fix this. Um, so this will be done and I'm going to go ahead and skin the sides do the ends, do the sides, let me skin those, and then before we do any of the trim, um, we'll go ahead and come back and I'll take a look at the progress. The outer plywood walls have been added, they're nice and square, and there's a little bit of overhang on the pieces, so when you get done, uh, make sure you put the, si the ends on first, the sides on second, because the sides will overlap the ends a little bit, and then just make sure you um, sand or file everything nice and flush. Once you get the plywood um, ends and sides all squared up, then it's time to start the trim. So the triangular piece on the end there, 
at the top. That goes on first. And then since you really don't have a lot of extra for the uh, narrow trim piece and the wider trim piece, um, you want to make sure you add that first. And then making sure you make your cuts very exact, plan them out a little bit, um, that's kind of important. So the thin um, trim pieces go on the ends. And then the wider pieces, and they're not much wider, they go on the, the sides. And then there should be enough of the thin trim pieces to go all along the top of the, uh, just over the windows on the sides of the boxcar. Okay, so let's talk about next steps. Um, the body, put a piece of scrap material across the opening of the door. And then either you have the piece that matches the opening that was laser cut and fell out like I do, or you have to get two pieces of uh, material uh, from the kit, from the, the remaining wood pieces, and then just put those together. Two by four material down the center. Uh, that's the smallest piece in the parts bag. Glue it in the opening. And that's essentially it for the body. And what we're going to do next, we're going to wait before we add the windows. We're going to paint and weather the body, and then we'll put the assembled windows in. Now the windows come in three pieces. There's five windows, so you got 15 pieces. They are a little tedious to put together. Just take your time. Um, you'll notice that some of the windows, their intent that they actually have, they're actually slider openings, and you can see the opening on the body and the actual rectangle that the entire window framing piece goes into isn't the same size. They're actually, the framing piece is wider. So the intent is that you, if you want to, you can put the sliding windows in different positions besides closed or all the way open or someplace in between. I did two that are someplace in between and then I've got two that are completely closed. And then the little window is goes on the back and uh, in the center. And uh, that one's, I've, you can see mine is closed. So um, assemble the wood pieces for the windows, three pieces, then paint them, then put the plastic in, but don't put the windows, don't take the backing off the largest piece until the body is completely done. Then you can stick them on, no problem. So let's paint this thing. So before we paint it, we're going to treat it with a mixture of alcohol and any ink, wash it with that, seal it with dull coat, spray it with hairspray, and then paint over the hairspray. What that does is the hairspray will, uh, will allow us to saturate it with water, it'll loosen up, and then we can scrape some of the paint off of the um, body, and the hairspray underneath will loosen up, and then the paint will allow us to uh, wear it off with uh, an X-Acto blade for careful or a toothpick or something like that. Um, so more detailed what we're going to do is I'll, I'll run through a whole bunch of photos so you can see examples but the isopropyl alcohol and India ink is a roughly about a 10 to 1 mixture. We're going to stain any of the supports, the deck out front, the, uh, the body, um, all of that stuff is going to get stained because we're going to wear some of that paint off and we want the underside of it to look like basically weathered wood. Um, after we get a alcohol and any ink wash on it, we want that to be the stable base. So then we're going to spray paint the body with dull coat. After that, we want to make sure the dull coat is completely dry and then we can put a thick layer. I actually put two layers of hairspray on the body itself. You don't need to worry about the roof yet, just the body. That's what we're going to wear it on. Star paints that were used were uh, STR 07 for Rio Grande Southern Depot buff for the wood sides and then the wood trim which is essentially around the windows and the trim boards that run around just the top, not the corners, but just the very top edge all that is the trim brown uh, STR Star Paints 33 is a uh, Denver Rio Grande Western trim brown for all the trim work. The roof I used Vallejo Engine Grime for gray. I like the way the, the grime it gets a good base gray coat that you can 
definitely attack it with chalk powders. But um, the uh, chalk powders that we use, we use really lightly on this model. And um, the smoke jacks were painted a Model Master magnesium buffing silver, but I didn't buff it. I just painted it and left it. So I airbrushed the depot buff on, but everything else got uh, brush painted. And the chalk powders uh, were just some chalk powders I found at a craft store that I've been using for <laughs> a decade or two. So the chalk powders get sealed again with dull coat, but at that point you really want to be really careful because if the windows, the glass is in, uh, you want to make sure that they get covered so you don't hit those with dull coat at any point. So I put the windows, the painted windows with the glass in them, painted them up, put the glass in, and then put them on as as one of the very last possible things that I could do. So let's take a look at each of the steps and then we'll look at some of the details that are uh, on it as well. And one other note, um, this structure, kind of like the trestle, uh, it has a uh, uneven earth that it's sitting on. So the front door walks right out onto the track level, but behind it the, uh, the earth slopes away. So in order to make it easier to put this on a layout, I built the legs that are going down into the earth, but I put a base piece of board underneath that. And then I put a stand underneath the front side of it. So when I sit it on the table, it's not sitting at an angle. So you'll notice there's a piece of board that sits um, right underneath the doorway. And all that does is just give it a uniform height. So when I just stand it and work on something, it's, it's level. So. Um, let's go through some of the photos and I'll show you examples. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. I'm putting a lot of notes. If you have any questions, they'll be down in the body of this video. I appreciate you guys watching, and please don't hesitate to subscribe to the YouTube channel or join the Itch at Scale Tutorials Facebook group. And uh, we will see you on the next Vance Junction Series episode. Thanks, you guys. Take care.